This is one Christian's perspective on the movie Soul. Get ready for it. Hey guys, what's up? It's Isaac David, and this is The Daily Disciple, where I help you follow Jesus daily. I know I took a little break for the Christmas holidays, and I really thank you guys for coming back and joining me once again for 2021. I hope you're having a great start to your year. And I wanted to kick things off in 2021 with a movie review. I know I'm not a movie critic and I don't claim to be. I'm just a Christian guy who watches movies and uh, has thoughts about them. So I figured, hey, why not come on to the old YouTube channel and share what I think about Soul in case you think you want to watch it or maybe you have watched it and you want to hear somebody else's perspective. Here is mine. So I can't give you like a full rundown about this, what this whole movie was about. I'm going to expect you to either watch the movie or read the description. But in general, it's about this guy who has this dream of being a performer, um, jazz musician. He's a pianist. And uh, he ends up actually like quote unquote dying. This is an animated movie. And he goes into the uh, great beyond, right? And he's on this kind of like, I don't know, rainbow treadmill thing where it's leading him to what the movie is calling the great beyond. He ends up getting his way out of there and then he meets this other person. It touches on some big questions, questions of what happens to me when I die? Uh, do we have purpose or is purpose just whatever you want to make it like do we actually have ultimate purpose something we're supposed to do and it also talks about and it, it touches on dreams like in terms of dreams of like i have a dream to do this and goals and things we want to accomplish that think that we think will satisfy us it touches on that too and what i think is so interesting about this movie is that you know, you often think about Pixar movies, or at least I do, as good for adults too, like great, like I love pretty, well, every Pixar movie pretty much, but you're often thinking, okay, these are more directed to children in, in different ways, but this movie, hey, it like, <laughs> it touches on some big, like, the dude literally like, quote unquote, dies in this movie, and he's trying to find a way to get back to Earth, and then there's this other person in the great before is what they're calling it. And they set up this whole structure where they have the great beyond and the great before and how they're saying that, you know, the afterlife or the, the before people are born, like they set up this structure, this worldview where they're trying to convey these ideas to people. And uh, it really tells me, you know, we all, for, for a Pixar movie to set up something like this, people know there's something more. Right. And that's that's something that it's played out through so many stories and fantasy and, and and just all that kind of thing. It's people know there's something more. They know it's just not they're not materialists. They're not just like this is all there is. We just die. We're just worm dust. Most people don't think that they know. And I think it's God who's placed this thing in us, this this knowledge of him, this knowledge that, look, we're more than flesh and bones. Like there is something that happens to us after we die. There is uh, like a spiritual world. Now, just on the movie itself, there are a couple things in the movie where it was like getting into weird, like, um, what would I say? Like mysticism, some stuff with like star signs and, and a lot of that weirdness. And I'm like, uh, that's not my deal. I don't like that. I don't appreciate that. And when they're trying to fit that into, although I do think it's interesting when they're trying to fit it into this obviously fictitious worldview system of the great before and the great beyond and, and all these different like funny character of this world they built. They do incorporate some of this like uh, mysticism and all that. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. That is not true either. So I'm okay with that. I have no problem with that. But you're watching a story and you think, well, actually this seems like it could be true. No, that's not like the star sign thing, all that stuff. It's a load of garbage. The Bible makes that clear so that I'm not in favor of that at all. Overall, what does the movie conclude? I think some of the biggest points of this movie and the most powerful moments of this movie was when the main character realizes that happiness or purpose or what makes life worth living is taking every moment as a gift and enjoying every moment, even just simple daily things. And, and to me, there was this moment where he's, he's just stepping onto the, he's just playing the piano for, you know, he, 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 his world is kind of rocked and he's experienced fulfillment of his dream to become kind of a, a stage performer of, of jazz music. And yet he feels still like he's missing something. And so he goes back to the piano and he starts playing. And, and in those moments, it's just this powerful like f flash, like of all the montage of all these different moments in his life of just ordinary moments that, that, you know the movie's telling you like this is what makes life worth living 
And so I think in that way, the movie gets some things right, right? Like I think that's um, kind of a common grace to all of us uh, that God gives us, this idea of common grace that even those who don't believe in God or don't uh, belong to him as children, they still experience a lot of the beauty that God has put on this earth and just the wonder of living life. And and so that's something that that really gives life meaning in a lot of ways, that kind of common grace. But what, what it misses, obviously, is it misses the piece of what our ultimate purpose truly is. We can see some glimpses in the movie that they're trying to tell us like our purpose here. We don't just have one purpose like our purpose is often built on like circumstances and what we need to do or what our you know, how our life you know, what happened in our life. And, uh, and then we kind of like adapt and that kind of thing. And I think that's true in terms of kind of our uh, general adapting purpose, but we got to remember our ultimate purpose. I think the Bible makes this really clear. Also the Westminster Confession of Faith talks about um, enjoying God forever, loving God, enjoying him forever. I think I'm quoting that a little bit incorrectly, but it's this idea of enjoying God forever. That's our purpose. That's our like, that's the overarching thing that that in every day that makes life worth living. That we can we can see the ordinariness of every day and see God's beauty in that, in the little things. And so, I mean, the movie comes to some, I would say, half-baked conclusions. Like, yes, the beauty and life and purpose and all that is not in in like reaching the the goal that you've always wanted to it's about every single day being a gift and 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 taking that in and enjoying that and being grateful for that and that's true but i think now like as we're looking at this movie and this piece of art and we're like okay this is cool now as we're, we're filling in our worldview we're like okay well what do we do now well we see jesus right we see jesus and we see who we are and we are broken people we are all sinful people and it doesn't take you too long to realize that that you know even little kids right they have a propensity to do what is wrong and that just shows what the bible states is obvious that we have a sin nature and the sin nature we've we've all sinned we've all fallen short of the glory of god that's what romans says because of that sin we are all deserving of hell the movie doesn't talk about hell or heaven or anything like that it doesn't even really allude to what the great beyond is But if we're actually grounded in reality here, there is a place called hell and there's a place called heaven. And because of our sin, we're deserving of hell. But that's why Jesus came. Maybe you've heard of Jesus and this idea of Jesus coming to this earth. It's never really clicked for you, perhaps. But Jesus, he he came to this earth to live the life we couldn't live. He lived a sinless life. And then he died on the cross to take the penalty for our sin. The Bible talks about Jesus fulfilling the wrath of God so we could be free. We could be free from uh, from the eternal punishment in hell, and we could also go to heaven. And that is like an amazing destiny that we can all look forward to. That is, that is the reality of the soul, the soul that our soul has been pulled towards what is wrong, but Jesus has bought us back and made us new in him, that our identity would no longer be in what we do, but in who we are in him. And I think there was so much good stuff in this movie about, you know, this guy finding and uh, trying to like fulfill this dream that he had for his whole life. And he's, he's working towards all this stuff and he feels like his life meant nothing. But then he looks back and through the eyes of kind of another person, he sees that, look, all of that was meaningful, not because he accomplished something, but because he was able to live, that he was living like that was a gift. And that every moment was something, something beautiful that he, he didn't, realize at the time. And I think as Christians, and maybe you're not a Christian, but as Christians, we look at each moment, we say, thank you, God, for this gift of life. Thank you, God, for this gift that I'm able to breathe in and that I have meaning and that I have purpose that there's not just, just not a materialistic world where I have no soul, but no, there is something beyond what I can comprehend. And through your word, you've given me the answers. And that doesn't mean we still don't have questions about oh man, spiritual realities and all that kind of thing. But it means that we can be grounded in God's truth. And that is something that, man, like that is so amazing. We can watch something like Soul and say, hey, this is a really fun, cool, interesting movie. And these uh, people that are, are, are writing this movie, they have interesting existential questions that we're all having. And now like 
as somebody that knows the truth, you're able to step into those spaces and say, hey, that is really interesting. It does prompt these interesting questions. And we know the answers because of Jesus, because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. To me, that makes like watching any kind of piece of content so much more exciting, so much more interesting because we're grounded in truth and yet we can explore these new uh, these these ideas that these these different concepts that other people are coming up with and we're able to impart just like process it through the biblical worldview to me that's so fun that's so exciting overall i really enjoyed the movie soul um as i said there's a little bit uh, sometimes a little too kiddy for me i really enjoyed the moments where they really got like existential and philosophical and like i'm like oh this is really fun and interesting for a uh, animated Pixar movie to do this. I hope they do more of this in the future. This is my first uh, video back, so you guys can tell me what you think about it. If you've seen it, if you want to see it, what movies uh, you've seen over the Christmas break that interest you, that maybe you think I should watch, let me know. This isn't turning into a movie review channel. I just enjoy movies and uh, you know I'll be back with more content. Before I go, I just want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons on Patreon. There are 26 of you on Patreon right now and I can't tell you how much of a difference that makes. It pretty much enables me to do everything that I do on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and uh, I'm so grateful for you providing me with the ability to share the gospel online and help people follow Jesus daily. So thank you for supporting. And if you want to help support me in my ministry, it would mean so much. Um, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple and sign up $5 a month. It would be amazing. Now, I'll see you next time. God bless.